Hey peeps, how you doing? So, this is the Nama tablet, and I think finally we can read it. That's right, we can actually read this thing. And um, so let's get into it. Um, it's just absolutely incredible what we can do now. Because I'm using uh, Hindu Indian Aryan gods in order to read this. And you're going to say, Charles, we know what this is. This is a cosmetic tablet, King Namur. Is uh, they say he's smiting. They only use this word for this: smiting his enemies, hitting this guy on the head, conquering Upper and Lower Egypt. Because here he is with the crown of um, Lower Egypt. Here, here he is with the crown. Of, here he is with the crown of Lower Egypt. Here he is with the crown of Upper Egypt. And we know what this is. And I'll say to those people: No, you're reading it wrong. And uh, there is a channel. Uh, the Lost History Channel, and he actually said this is the god Baal, and he's right. Gods are presented this height, rarely kings, or it could be a king depicted as a god. We're going to find out what's going on here, because this is actually the god Vishnu slaying the Nagas. This here, this here is Garuda slaying a Naga. This guy is a snake. He's crawling along the ground. He's got a plumed tail. These are not arrows. These are plumes. This is a tail. We're going to see all of this. This is one of Vishnu's attendants. This is the Hindu, the Aryan calf of creation, the cow of creation, and it gave birth to the four cardinal points in some legends, as Indians will know. Bit of Brahma in there, the four cardinal points of the pyramid. And we know this is Vishnu, the solar deity. And there are two major um, heads of the pantheon in India because uh, if you stack a bunch of monotheisms together and mutually respect them, what do you have? You have a polytheism. So in India, we have Vishnu, who seems to be a bit of a solar deity. And uh, we have Krish uh, Krishna is a, a type of Vishnu, a form of Vishnu with a mace. And we have... Uh, Shiva, who is a kind of Jehovah, and uh, who is very similar to Jehovah, Je Je Jehiva, Jeshiva, Sh Shiva. So let's get into all this and let's see what's going on. We're going to discuss what this creature is as well. It's so fascinating. This is amazing. Okay, so the Nama Stealer, uh, just fascinating, fascinating. Um, so, and here's the problem. Here's the thing. They say uh, this is Narmur. Now, how do you read this? Some Egyptologists read it Narmur, Nama. Some read it Murna. And we actually don't know how to read this. The, uh, the Egyptian historians tell us the first king of Egypt was Menna, which is uh, basically Hindu mythology. The first king was Manu. And Manu uh, escaped with the help of a fish. We'll get to that later. He escaped destruction in a deluge. And that's what this tablet is about, because it's about the reconsolidation of Egypt after the 3100 BC catastrophe. So how do you read it? Murnar or Murnar, we don't know. You read into the direction of the hieroglyph. So it could be Mur, Murnar, or it could be going that way, Murnar, Nama. And here is the man with the mace, the blue man. He has a mace, he has a discus, he has a trumpet, and he has a lotus flower. And here we go. It's another type of Monar tablet, but from India. And we see the little men underneath. It's like on here. He's got the men underneath. He's got little helpers. Here he's got helpers. This is the same king as here. Monar, Monar, Namur, whoever he is. He could be Narashima, the lion god, because he's got a lion tail. We'll get to that because Namur, Narashima, it's so similar. I mean, this is amazing. Um, so how it works is, look, he's got it, this is this is him as as a solar deity. That's why that's where this monotheism originates. And he's got lots of little helpers, little underworld creatures, little men around him, big man, little men around him, big man, little men around him. Lots of little men everywhere, little men, little helpers. So the name of the mace is the Kamadaki. It's the Garda or mace. 
of Vishnu. And he often holds this and he turns into, I think it's eight different avatars. Um, one of them is Krishna who slays a Naga, uh, he slays a king, I believe it's a Naga king, uh, with the mace. So that mace is very important. That mace there. Here is the mace drawn very huge. You can see it's a solid, you can see the origin of, of Vishnu very clearly as a solar deity. Unlike uh, Shiva, who is, if he is Jehovah, is closer to the deity. Um, ruling over earth, uh, who, who is, you know, the fallen angel. He's got a solar wheel. He's got the mace. So um, here is Vishnu on Garuda, the bird. And here is the lion form. He has a lion form uh, of Vishnu. Uh, Nirashima or Nirashimha Deva, which means God. Ripping apart a Naga demon. He's got the mace. He's probably bashing him on the head. This guy's mace has fallen down. Narashima, the lion form of Vishnu. That sun god. See the solar emblem behind him? Ripping apart a Naga. Doing a bit of a Kali Ma there. The Namian lion was slain by Hercules and he wore a lion tail on his back afterwards. And this guy here is kind of wearing a, a lion, he's wearing a, he's wearing a, how do I make it bigger? He's wearing a, doesn't matter, he's wearing a, he's wearing a lion tail. Uh, oh, there we go, it worked, okay. He's wearing a lion tail right there. Hercules before Hercules, fascinating. Make it smaller again. Okay, and you're going to say, Charlie, how do you know... How do you know that that bird here is Garuda? Well, he's, he's, a, he's huge. And Vishnu flies around on Garuda. And what, what Garuda is doing here is killing a Naga. And we can read in the Garuda legends exactly uh, how it all went down. So uh, basically, if I haven't highlighted it, let's, let's just... Uh, Okay, the Garuda are enemies to the Naga, a race of intelligent serpent or dragon-like beings. Whoops. Whom they hunt. The Garudas at one time caught the Nagas by seizing them by their heads. So that could be why the heads, are, the heads here are ripped off the bodies. Okay, they're missing. And here he's actually sitting on the tail and he looks like he's putting a hook in the nose or even in the mouth. What's that for? What's that about? Well, let's read about Garuda, the giant bird of Asia. The, um, the Garudas at one time caught the Nagas by seizing them by their heads, but the Nagas learned by swallowing large stones they could make themselves too heavy to be carried by the Garudas, wearing them out and killing them from exhaustion. This secret was divulged to one of the Garudas by the ascetic Karambia, who taught them how to seize a Naga by the tail and force him to vomit up his stone. So here we have the Garuda... Seizing the Naga by the tail, it's standing on his tail, and it's going to force him to vomit up the stones. That's what I think is happening here. Huh. That's what's happening. It's mythology. And we should look to mythology to explain what's happening here, not just make it up. The Egyptian mythology, the problem with the Egyptian mythology is Egypt has been conquered so many times that... When you read the Egyptian mythology, you don't know whose mythology you're reading. But if you go way back in time to before the Egyptians, which is this, the great catastrophe of 3100 BC, and this that followed, I think there were, there were Aryan tribes in Egypt, and they had the, these, the same gods that are now venerated in India. It's amazing. Um, again, again, Vishnu. Okay, so Garuda, the giant bird. Other forms of Garuda, just fast, just a wonderful, wonderful, interesting religion. Okay, we get to the second part of the stela, which is actually the front. <laughs> so Nama is on the back, this is on the front. And what is that for? What is this creature here? The things to take away, Nama is mentioned again, 
Myrna, Mena, whatever his name is. But what is what are these two creatures? And we'll get to the fish last. Because that has something to do with early Christianity. So I was looking at this creature here. And I was thinking, well, what is it? What is it? And um, no one knows. It doesn't seem to exist anymore in any mythology. And if you know what it is, I'd be very grateful if you could tell me. But what it is very close to is a manticore and a pixie. So what it is, if you look at it, it's a lion. Lion's heads, that's not a lion's tail. And this is a serpent's, a serpent's head. It's about like the two serpents about to copulate or something. But that is more like a tail of a scorpion. So I look up manticore and it actually tells me manticore. Um, the head of a human. Okay, it doesn't have the head of a human. The body of a lion and the tail of venomous spines similar to porcupine quills, while other depictions have it with the tail of a scorpion. Mm-hmm. So there's something to manticore in this. Now, it, it is, even, in fact, even closer to something from China called a pixiu. And a pixiu, um, it's a hybrid creature. And um, it's... It, well, it says it's an earth and sea variation, particularly an influential or say so it's a creature of wealth and it has a voracious appetite for gold, silver and jewels. So the, the Chinese have always regarded these as auspicious creatures that possessed magical powers capable of drawing Kai Chi wealth from all directions. And this Chi must be an Aryan concept because I've seen the same thing in Egypt. It's called Ka and we've made a video about this. The Chinese Fo is the Egyptian Ba. And the Chinese Chi is the Egyptian Ka. And they have the same concept. So it must be the Aryan tribe that founded both China and Egypt. And India. Or refounded these countries after some deluge or catastrophe. Which is what this tablet is partly about. And we'll get to that. And this is for good luck. So you have this tablet. It's 60 centimeters long, 40 centimeters wide. It's for good luck. You, you, you do your makeup with this, you're going, to get, you're going to get it rich. You're going to get wealthy. This is like a Chinese dragon. You see what I mean? This is amazing. Just amazing. Um, Pixie who crave the smell of gold and silver and like to bring their master's money in their mouth. Statues of the creature are used to attract wealth in Feng Shui. So let's get to what it looks like. So it's, um, uh, it's basically, so what are the characteristics? It's a, it's a wing, it's a winged animal. Um, and they have the head of a Chinese dragon, the body of a lion, and historically sport on their heads, one antler male or two antlers female. So we don't see that here, but I mean, this is 5,000 or more years old, and this is a bit more recent. In modern times, this legendary creature's historical physical appearance has been somewhat lost and is now more commonly depicted with only one antler. So they've only got Chinese depictions from 200 BC. As you see, this is 3,000 years older than these depictions. So expect a bit of difference. Um, yeah, just amazing. So there's the imperial pixie, a more rotund body, as it said. Lion with serpent head. And it will bring you wealth. It will make you rich. Okay, let's get on to the final aspect of the tablet, which is why he is called Mina, the first king. Because in Hindu cosmology, the first king, Menes, Manu, is the first king. So let's read about it. And this has a lot to do with early Christianity. Because I was reading, I was, I was wondering, and I asked people on Facebook, how come the fish is worshipped by early Christians? And someone said, oh, well, you know, um, well, uh, they've, um, you know, the, 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 the age of Aquarius. And I said, what, would that make you start worshipping a fish? Um, who looks at the sky and what it actually is is this legend here I think it's the it, it, it's a lost legend from Europe the legend of Matsaya and how this works is um, uh, Matsaya is, is brought up um, and then he comes to rescue he's, he's brought up by humans and then he comes to rescue Manu Manu is the first man he has gone out to see and uh, with his uh, disciples or followers, the seven sages. Now that sounds a lot like Christianity, does it not? And the fish actually rescues them and it pulls the boat along with its horn and it shows them the way to go after the deluge. 
And this recreates the kingdom after the first deluge, the kingdom of Manu. And here in Egypt, we have that legend being applied to the first king who was supposedly called Mena, Manu in 3100 BC, smiting his enemy, apparently. He's actually killing the Naga. Is it the king in mythology or is it a historical document? And Egyptologists say, oh, this is history, the first historical document. But the problem with archaeologists is they don't know anything at all about mythology. If you are going to purchase this from a store, from an artisan, you want beautiful mythological depictions, not political propaganda on your cosmetic palette. Archaeologists are slightly autistic and do not understand this concept. Well, it's true. It's true. So that is kind of what it is about. It is about uh, a memory of, or, 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 or the deluge that has just happened. And this king, as it, well, that, yes, he is reconquering Upper and Lower Egypt. That is depicted here very well. But it is showing him as, as, as Vishnu, possibly as the Krishna avatar of Vishnu, of Vishnu with the mace, killing the Nagas, his faithful uh, bird Garuda killing another Naga there, a demon, basically a demon with snake people with snake like attributes and uniting Egypt. And that's what it's all about. There we go.